Linear approximations are pretty handy for calculating things approximately if you don't have a calculator. So probably you'll always have a calculator on your phone or something like that. But if you didn't, the story I always say is if you were on a desert island and the island people wanted you to calculate, let's just say, uh, the square root of 80 very closely, like within two decimal places, and you didn't have a calculator, could you do that? And if you know how to do linear approximations, you can. So the linear approximation is a function of x, and it goes like this. It says f of a, so your function evaluated at a, we'll talk about what a is in a second, plus your derivative evaluated at a times x minus a. Or you might see this part written as f prime of a delta x, or like the change in x. Um, but this is how I prefer to write it. So if you had a function and an a, you could write the linear approximation for anything. So what is the function I'm concerned with in the square root of 80? Well, it's the square root function. And a is a point close to 80 that's easy to work with in the function. So what's something near 80 that's easy to take the square root of? How about 81? Right, square root of 81 is 9, so that's really easy. So a is something near this number in question. Now I need a derivative in here. So I'm going to take the derivative of my function. And what I like to do, the derivative of the square root is 1 over 2 times the square root. That's a really helpful trick. Uh, for derivatives of square roots, if you haven't seen that before. If you don't like that method, you can write the square root of x as x to the 1 half, and then use the power rule. Bring down the 1 half, x, subtract 1 from the power. And then if you rewrite that, that's 1 over 2. Negative means on the bottom, 1 half means square root. So I just like to do the derivative of a square root is 1 over 2 times the square root. And if there's anything else in there, you got to multiply by the chain rule. but so I, I like doing that. You know, there's a tip you weren't expecting on getting in this video. Okay, and now I can start filling this thing in. So my linearization, my linear approximation is f of a, that's square root of a, square root of 81, plus f prime, which is 1 over 2 square root of a, plug a into there, times x minus a. There is my linearization function, and I can clean this up, right? We know what the square root of 81 is. That's 9. Uh, so this would be 1 over 2 times 9, or 1 over 18. All right, now, so for values close to 81, this closely approximates it. Let's plug in 8. I'm going to plug in 80 right there, and let's see what happens. My linearization of 80, that'll be 9 plus 1 over 18. I shouldn't have drawn that arrow. 80 minus 81. Well, that's 9 plus 1 over 18 times minus 1, or I might as well write that as just 19 minus 1 over 18. And if you feel like it, you can get a common denominator, but uh, I think I'm just going to leave it like that. So now if I plug in 9 minus 1 divided by 18 into my calculator, that's 8.94 repeating. All right, that's what our approximation is for the square root of 8. Now if I plug in to my calculator the square root of 80, I'm getting 8.94427. So wow, that's a pretty good approximation. I'm within two 
10 thousandths of a place just by doing a little bit of derivative work. So if you did that for the island people, I guess they'd be pretty impressed and they'd say, okay, we'll let you live and use a calculator again. Anyway, <laughs> that's how you use the linear approximation formula. I just recommend you re uh, remember this and then from there, it's just a matter of plug and chug on the test. Okay, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, please like and subscribe. Tell me what videos you want me to make next and have a great day.